Hi, my name is Aiden Killick. I'm the President Chief Executive Officer of High Blockchain. Uh, where is the presentation? Ah, there we go. Okay, good. So uh, today we're going to talk about our approach to evolving in the crypto mining ecosystem. Uh, we're listed on NASDAQ uh, under the ticker Hive. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the President and CEO of Hive. Um, I actually got involved in crypto in 2017. I was inspired by Hive and I founded a company, raised 30 million bucks and took it public as CEO and I joined Hive in summer of 2021 as president and COO and got promoted to CEO uh, a couple months ago. It's been an amazing journey. Hive's a much bigger company. It's raised hundreds of millions of dollars and has gone on to uh, be, achieve a lot of firsts in the industry, which we're gonna go over. Um, now, one thing about crypto mining stocks is that they've got a lot of volatility, which if you uh, are a savvy investor can earn you parabolic returns. It's even more volatile than Bitcoin, as you could see here, looking at a standard deviation on um, December 30th, 2022, you could see the plus minus is 19%, whereas Bitcoin's 10%. So a couple big milestones in this last year. Um, we realigned our long-term strategy with our strategic partners, Blockbase and Barrage, who are instrumental to our success. We hit 2 exahash of Bitcoin mining capacity and 6 terahash of Ethereum mining. So we were one of the largest Ethereum miners in the world, over 1% of the entire network, and in addition to that, uh, over 1% of the Bitcoin network. We were uh, one of the four companies globally that had a strategic partnership with Intel to develop a Bitcoin mining rig. And we were the first and only company to successfully deliver, manufacture, and deploy um, a Bitcoin mining rig with Intel and my appointment. <clears throat> so a little bit um, high by the numbers. In January, we mined over 260 Bitcoin. Uh, we had ended the month with almost 2.7 exahash, which again is over 1% of the entire network. And uh, we have over 2,400 Bitcoin green and clean in our uh, balance sheet. And we did a massive upgrade, one of our biggest upgrades in history, over 6,700 new generation ASICs. Of that, 3,500 were uh, S19J Pros, if you guys are familiar with that. And um, our buzz miners, which are powered by the Intel block scale chip. So 3,200 of those. And so instead of expanding during the bear market, what we did is we actually upgraded a lot of the older equipment we have. Being a legacy miner since 2017, Hive has had to evolve through the various bear markets. And so when you upgrade the efficiency of your machines, you improve your gross mining margin, so you have a, a lower Bitcoin break-even price. A lot of companies in the sector have just tried to aggressively scale, take on debt, and you see a lot of big names going bankrupt. I'm not going to name them, but they're all over Coindesk. You could look it up. Uh, and we've navigated the bear market uh, very intelligently. I'm incredibly proud of my team. Uh, the unsung heroes of Hive are coders, our network technicians, our data center technicians. Uh, we've got uh, brilliant general counsel who was on a panel yesterday. And of course, lovely Ohana, who's going to chat a little bit. So here's one thing that's really cool that we did in December. So we have three resources that we manage at Hive. One is energy, the other is capital, and the third is technology. So when I say manage energy, we can either use the energy to hash and mine Bitcoin, or in some cases, we could sell it back to the grid. In December alone, we made 3.1 million in profit selling back to the grid. That's equivalent of mining over 800 Bitcoin, right? Far more lucrative to sell the energy back to the grid. Now in January, we made 180,000 selling back to the grid, right? So you could see how we adjust our deployment of energy. And of course, as a public company, we have to adjust our deployment of capital. And our third, tech, uh, our third resource is our technology stack, as evidenced by the high buzz miner. So again, we were the first company globally, and so far the only company that has successfully taken an ASIC chip and built an entire Bitcoin mining rig system around it, which is the uh, Hive Buzz Miner, and we have them running in Sweden and New Brunswick. By the way, we've got two data centers in Iceland, two in Sweden, and two in Canada. We're all green and clean power, uh, decentralized globally, uh, which is a strategy. And um, here are some of the firsts that Hive is known for. So again, the very first public crypto miner ever uh, the first to mine Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're listed on NASDAQ, we're listed in Frankfurt, and we're listed in Canada. That's a first. Uh, we're the first to put data centers on our balance sheet. We own the land we built New Brunswick, 
and we've, we're the first to be green energy focused, and as mentioned, we're the first to do our own Bitcoin mining rig. And that's a, that's a key distinction, because a lot of companies have tried, but a lot have failed. It's, it's very challenging. Um, so we're going to get into the financials a little bit. Oh, there's a picture with me uh, in our prototype. Um, so just analytically, Bitcoin is looking a little overbought right now. We always put these sort of disclosures in our uh, financial presentations. And it's the same way you could see sort of how Hive stock parabolically follows Bitcoin. Um, and so what you could see here is, um, again, these are some more financial slides for you know the, the keen investors out there. As you see, uh, difficulty go up and Bitcoin price go down. What that does is your mining margins go down. So on the right, gross mining margin, if you look at the dark blue bars, um, you could see that our gross mining margin has reduced over time, but nevertheless, we've managed to increase the amount of Bitcoin on our balance sheet. And how we do that is we actually focus on mining for profit, not for scale. So we have 140 megawatts of infrastructure globally, but in the last quarter, we only utilized 100 megawatts of it. Why? Because in some cases, we were actually selling power back to the grid, and in other cases, we will refrain from mining and using electrons um, if our variable power price is high and only mine in our fixed power contracts, right? So there's a lot, there's a lot of math. We do a lot of Excel, um, which I'm one of my favorite things about my job and I'm super proud of my team. We've got some of the brightest guys in the industry who huddle uh, daily. Uh, and you could see by the numbers, uh, you know, the last four quarters, 70 million a year ago, the most recent quarter is about 30 million. And nevertheless, we've been mining more and more Bitcoin because we've been growing with time. And it's key, we don't have any debt on our balance sheet where a lot of miners have taken debt or they've encumbered their Bitcoin balance by borrowing against it. We haven't done any of that. Um, as I mentioned, our Bitcoin hodl has grown significantly. And um, a big part of the Hive story is our focus on ESG. And this, this is really important because I think as Bitcoin mining evolves, companies need to be more mindful of the communities that they participate in. You can't just go in and buy the cheap power. You have to invest in the community. You have to be mindful. And Johanna's going to talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that we have. And so, by the way, you know, the kind of pillars of mining Bitcoin are you want cheap electricity, uh, cool, dry climate, and of course, um, good, good connectivity, which is uh, exemplified in countries like Iceland, Sweden, and Canada. And so, uh, ESG is sort of a new mandate that a lot of institutions have for investing. So it's environment, social, and governance. And so Johanna's going to talk about how we tick those boxes. Johanna? Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. So uh, what we're seeing here is the Boden Vattenkraftwerk, the Bodo, uh, Boden hydro, hydro plant at the very northern part of Sweden. And this is the power plant that is providing uh, our facility, a 32 megawatt facility with all its power. We mostly, uh, uh, across the company, mine with hydropower, but also a bit of uh, wind and some geothermal uh, power in Iceland. And what is really interesting in, in the areas that we're working, especially in Sweden, is that this is um, stranded power. So uh, for the communities, for the grid, it's really important uh, that we are there. We take advantage of, of the stranded power and provide a revenue stream for the community, for the grid provider. And talking about the, the grid, uh, Hive has become one of the biggest uh, participants in a grid balancing system where we, um, in, in today's society, where we get more and more dependent on, uh, on, uh, on energy uh, and at the same time uh, want to shift into renewable energy uh, to be able to participate in such a balancing program where literally uh, our unique data center allows us to, within five seconds, power down half of the, the power that the system is required to meet uh, these peak demand uh, uh, moments that can happen when people come home from their work and, and want to plug in, in their, charge their car and turn on the, on the dishwasher. Uh, within 30 seconds, we have to commit to power down the entire amount, and that could be up to 20 megawatts. Uh, that we can turn off on a mo moment's notice and share with the grid uh, to balance that, that, um, that system. 
Another thing is that you have seen that we work in cold areas because uh, our uh, computer fleet, our mining fleet, is generating a lot of warm, uh, warm um, air. And so if you harvest that uh, heat in the right way in these cold climates, it's actually a, a very nice resource, as can be seen in, in Sweden, where this year we're gonna, uh, we have partnered together with a company called Actira, and we are going to provide the, our waste heat to a 9,000 square meter uh, large uh, greenhouse that will produce about 700 uh, tons of cucumbers and over 300 tons of tomatoes each year. Uh, and we're talking a very northern part of, of uh, Sweden. Uh, we're already uh, harvesting the, the waste heat in Le Chute, Canada. Uh, just basically pushing that heat from our data center into the neighboring uh, large facility, a 4,000 square meter facility, uh, so that we provide that base heat for them, revenue stream for us, and, and at the same time doing good for the environment. Uh, and lastly, time's up, but um, uh, mining is unique in another way as well. We're scalable, we're mobile, uh, and what we're looking at doing in Sweden is basically put a container solution, uh, 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 submersion cooling, uh, which is very energy efficient, uh, right by the local hockey stadium. That's the Hive Hockey Stadium uh, to provide also the base heat for that uh, facility uh, and saving the, the community about two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. So. And also, Johanna, this stadium we've donated to, uh, it's called the Hive Arena, as you could see, that's our logo. The logo's on the jerseys, and we also uh, allow all the kids in Bowdoin to go watch the games for free after school, so they have something to do, encourage them to uh, get involved with athletics. And the Bowdoin hockey team has uh, had two players go on to play in the Stanley Cup, so this is... This is, you know, a, a serious uh, Swedish hockey town. So we've also sponsored a local sports team in New Brunswick. So this covers a social aspect of ESG, as well as the environmental that Johanna was talking about. All right. Thank you. Any questions or, I don't know, come talk to us after. Get a hat. We've got really cool hats. <laughs>